So I'm in a similar situation probably to Tim, but I think we kind of had it at College Board a little worse off. Um, exactly a year ago, I was here as an attendee, and I had just literally joined College Board um, to build out a new media department. Um, they had absolutely nothing in the digital media, new media space. I mean, literally had a website. Um, had no real other web-based assets, had no mobile, had no social. Um, in that year, we've gone from zero staff to probably about a staff of 100. Um, and one of the main ways that we've kind of managed to grow and solve the problem um, was to have an open API strategy. So we thought not only do we need to staff up and, and build out these capabilities ourselves, um, but we also need a legion of external developers that can help. It's the only way we're going to be able to make up for that lost time. Um, so I thought it might be helpful to kind of show you guys where I went from being in the attendance last year to kind of where we are today, which I think was, happened very, very quickly, um, and kind of do it in a step-by-step -step guide to how, from a, from a business executive perspective, being able to actually sell the right people at the company um, to move things along pretty quickly. And of course, I need to make myself look like a su superhero in the process, because it's, it's my presentation, so. so that's what I'm gonna do. So again, last year, year ago, I was sitting there in the audience, I was, you know, what I would consider an average Joe. Um, I knew we already had a bunch of great assets. The College Board, if you don't know, we actually invented the SAT and the AP. Um, so as far as we're, a, our mission is to help connect kids with, with college success. So we already sit on every single SAT question that's ever been used and cycled through and retired, every single AP question, all the curriculum, all the study material, um, college data, so every admissions, piece of admissions detail from every college voluntarily going back 100 years, um, every test centers, even mundane stuff like that. So we had really great digital assets, great data, great content at our disposal. It was already there. Um, so the question was, what are we gonna do with that? So that's when my Peter Parker radioactive spider moment hit. Um, I was sitting here in the audience, and I think something changed forever that day at uh, BAPI, New York, 2009. Um, it clicked that in addition to, to significant investments we had to make just to build up our capabilities and our internal staff, um, we could also build a community of external developers through an open, open API strategy and help make even greater strides than just brute forcing, investing on internal resources. Um, so I know it's not just a cool, techie thing to do. This actually could be a game changer. Um, so I decided from that day forward that it was my superhero mission to uh, take it upon myself to, to transition and sell College Board leadership on this transition. Um, so despite the fact that I was literally now a superhero, um, I knew the next steps were gonna be really, really difficult. Um, if, if you know anything about College Board, they're a 100-year-old, $600 million plus organization. Um, I had to literally start from the beginning. I mean, senior executives didn't know what a web service was, didn't know what an API was, didn't understand a service-oriented architecture. Um, it was literally doing API 101. Um, so in addition to that, the idea of opening these things up to external developers was just completely radical and hard to, hard to explain, much less sell them on, on why they should do it. Um, so I literally started at the beginning, um, and, and hopefully this can serve as kind of a step-by-step -step guide on how you too, if you're in the same predicament, can, can follow and, and do these things. Um, so first thing I did, educate everyone. So I, they probably got sick and tired of me talking about it, but I literally, anyone who would listen from the CEO, president of the company, all the way down, if they didn't know the value, what, an, what a web service was, what an API was, it was on me to sell them. So I think an important piece of this kind of transformation is, and this is what I tell tech executives all over, it's on you to sell them on it. Um, if you can't make them understand it and sell it, it's not because they're old fashioned or dumb, it's because you're not good enough at selling it. So I think it's a, it's a transitional shift to taking the onus upon yourself to really own educating and selling senior leadership. And I think that's the right mindset to start in. Um, one, of the, one of the ways big old companies stay big and old is that mid to senior level management can't sell or change leadership. And I, I see it time and time again. Um, so we, we had to make them understand what all this stuff means and what the value is so that it was an obvious decision, which is what happened. So here's kind of my, my steps that I took in, in, in the onset. Um, I literally started API 101. Here's the web service. Here's what, a, here's what data is. Here's the content. I drew a lot of pretty pictures um, and eventually got people to the point where they were actually saying SOA saying web services in meetings. Um, this is like the senior operating team, so that was, that was a pretty cool experience. Um, 
one of the, th the other things I found, I found useful was I hit this home, I, I drove this home time and time again. We're not reinventing the wheel here. We're not the first. Um, of course, not everyone's doing it. It's not quite mainstream yet, um, but it will be soon. So we're at the right level of the adoption curve for our organization. And that was a, a very important message that seemed to resonate. I, I talked about emerging trends. Whenever there was a contest that came out or a hackathon or something like apps for democracy or apps for the army or these things are starting to pop up all over the place, I made sure people knew about it and like, hey, look, people are, other people are doing it. These things are happening. There's cheap, easy ways to generate buzz and make this work and show value to our constituents. Um, one other thing I noticed was, and this is, this is a trick you can use everywhere, it helps us sometimes bring in external experts to say the same thing you're already saying, but as an expert. So. Um, <laughs> I think Accenture does this really well. So um, I, brought, <laughs> I brought in Devin and uh, Dalen actually from Mashu who helped me extensively kind of put together um, you know, in, in a small engagement and be my kind of expert, uh, expert witness, if you will, in, in, in saying some of these things. Um, so next, I think it's important to talk about key values to opening your API. And, and I don't think you just talk about revenue generation, which is the obvious one. Um, there are a lot of different values and you have to align them properly with your organization. For example, we're a nonprofit, so not everything is always about revenue. I mean, we have a mission that's connecting kids to college success, and sometimes extending the mission is more important than making a buck or saving money. Um, so it's important to know that when talking to your audience and selling this stuff. So here's some of the values we identified. So revenue generation was the first one. It was not, I shouldn't have put that first. It's not, it wasn't the thing we led with. It wasn't the most important thing. But you gotta call it out, no matter what, it's important. Nonprofits need to keep the lights on too. Cost reduction, so in a business environment, and in a nonprofit, the, the other way to get more profitable is to reduce the bottom line. So sometimes cost savings are just as important to some, depending on your audience. So extending the mission, if anyone's from a nonprofit, you probably know this very well, sometimes just helping your constituents is a good thing and worthy of doing it in and of itself. Innovation speed, this was a big one. So as I mentioned before, College Board was, is, was and still is pretty far behind. We've made, we've made fast strides. Um, but the speed to get new digital apps built and launched w starting a year ago was almost unimaginable. I mean, it was like, how are we ever gonna tackle this thing? Um, so there's multiple ways to, to skin it, but um, having an open API and other developers besides your own staff building things is a great way to start. And it's great when you see things built that you didn't think of yourself. Um, and then last is flooding the digital market. So from a competition, competitive advantage, sometimes there's a value in just having your brand or your assets out there in front of people as much as possible. And again, you, it's hard to do that without a motivated, rabid developer fan base. So next step we did was we had to kind of look at our audience and figure out who exactly are we gonna serve with our API. Um, College Board's, again, rather unique and complex in the fact that we literally serve students, parents, teachers, administrators, school districts, colleges, universities, commercial education companies like Kaplan, um, Capitol Hill, our trustees. It's a just immense list. Um, it's important to identify early on exactly who you want to serve with this open API strategy and laser focus on just that small group or else you're going to try to be everything to everyone and you're going to fail. So here's who we identified. Students, first and foremost. That's core to our mission. We've got to help students in almost every single thing we do. Um, we also decided, and each of these has a, a slightly different pricing model, um, we decided to make it free to students. So um, students of any kind can access our API for free. The next one, which was interesting, was what we call the weekend hacker. So that's a, a entrepreneurial, very vocal, kind of um, lone wolf developer who likes to go and build these apps and do things and is always looking for new um, iPhone apps on the App Store that could potentially make them money. Um, so for, for those folks, it's, it's a little bit of a dance because you want to, you don't want to overcharge and lead with charging them because you want them, to, they'll be your most vocal fan base. Um, but there are certain things that just don't make business sense that you, for you to expose without charging for it. So there's, there's a little bit of a blended model there. Corporate partners, that's from a revenue generation perspective, probably the top for us. Um, so companies, example companies like Blackboard, Kaplan, other ones that could add value to their existing products through content, data, things we can provide um, is interesting and, and could be good for us. Um, next one is colleges and universities. 
So most likely we always deal with them for free. They're what we consider our member base. So, but again, um, depends on the data. Sometimes we may have to charge. Okay, so next thing we did was we decided to start small. So we've actually looked at kind of what we already have. So in, a, in true entrepreneur fashion, we said, what's the cheapest, lowest risk, quickest way to kind of make baby steps, use the scientific method, and prove this model. Prove that an open API can work, prove that it's got application, prove that we can execute on it, we're not completely crazy here. Um, so what we did is, AP Computer Science is one of, our, one of our programs, one of our curriculum for AP. We have access to AP Computer Science students. Um, we're always looking for ways to help apply the curriculum to the real world. Um, so doing a, a contest where AP Computer Science students, you learn Java already, could you use our API and try to build an innovative app and the winner gets a scholarship, seemed like a really good thing that the AP program folks loved. Something they could put on a college resume or a college application um, and potentially get a contest out of it. So that was, for us, a really low risk, kind of inexpensive way to, to test this thing out. So I'm sure everyone could find a, a way to do something like that in their organization. Um, but the bottom line is, do it, get a quick win, do it inexpensively, have something tangible you can show when you're getting ready to, to start blowing this thing out of the water and say, look, we did something and it worked, um, as opposed to just talking about it. So, once you've succeeded and you've reached true superhero status, um, that's when the fun begins. You get to come to events like this and compare yourself to a superhero. Um, but in a lot of ways, it's just the beginning. Um, Superman himself said that with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, to support and build a community of rabid fans, it takes a whole nother presentation. And uh, I don't want to steal thunder from someone else who's probably going to present about this later, because I'm a superhero and they're not. Um, so, maybe next year. But the important thing is measure your success. Um, so the whole, we baselined it when I first started and said, what do we have? Didn't take long, we had nothing. Um, so a year later, we're, we got a little something. Um, and I think when we project out where we, we expect to be next year is when the, uh, and I've managed to turn a graph into a superhero chart, which I think is pretty awesome, um, is when the, the, the rise kind of really starts to, to happen. Um, so we expect by next year we'll have hundreds if not thousands of digital apps. Some blend of those will be built by our existing internal team that we've established. Um, hopefully more and more of those will surprise us and get built by external teams of people we haven't even met yet. So speaking of these new apps, I want to show you one that's kind of our first one, our first win, a good example of what the, the API can do, if I can make this work. Thank you. So interestingly enough, um, just to give you some background to that app, so that's, there's a hard copy book that gets sold at Barnes & Noble and, and other uh, retailers that's the Book of Majors. And we've been selling things like that, the College Handbook, other um, of these old, and they're only available in hard copy. 
but the content all lives somewhere digitally. So it's really a matter of kind of unleashing and freeing that content. And that's something that we could build, someone else could build. It's got mashups, it's got everything. This was two weeks probably, turnaround time, which is just unheard of um, for us. So it really does kind of bring everything together. It, rapid innovation, inexpensive, immersion of the digital market, all these great things that, and digitizing our, our 100 year old books of content. So it's great. So I'll leave you some parting words. <laughs> Sorry for that. Exposing your data can be a lot like exposing yourself. And the same rules apply. I guess the guy from The Hangover. <laughs> first, avoid cold climate. Make sure you warm up the audience first. You're going to walk in. It's probably going to be going to be cold when you start selling this stuff. It's your job to, to, to warm it up. Don't do it around minors. That's a problem we have. Um, we have students. We have student data. Be very careful when dealing with anything in the under, um, under 18 crowd. If you charge, people probably won't pay. Um, depends how you look. But <laughs> a lot of people, I think, come out of the gate trying to charge for their data, their content. They think they've got the, the best thing since sliced bread. You may get disappointed. I think you start small. You start in a closed group. You make it free. See what happens. Take baby steps. So there are always risks to opening up your APIs and data. Be upfront about it. Set basic rules. Protect your backside a bit or your front side in the previous slide. And the sky's the limit. Thank you. <laughs>